Our next speaker um, is uh, Ms. Tammy Aran Shushan, the head of the French department in Mashav's agricultural training program. Good afternoon. I think uh, it's very um, appropriate that um, my, my, uh, my part is right after uh, Rams because I think uh, I'm going to go from a very global uh, point of view to something that is very specific. And uh, I'd like to present to you um, a model or an idea or something that is being implemented um, to try and uh, encourage the adoption of uh, drip irrigation in sub-Saharan Africa. So, um, Okay, so we're talking about Sub-Saharan Africa, and of course, uh, um, I think um, most people here know that the, uh, uh, the rainfall uh, that we're talking about in, in the region um, of, our, of, of Senegal is, is uh, Sahelian uh, climate um, with about uh, rainfall of about 450 to 500 um, millimeters per year, and uh, similar to, to, is, to Israel maybe, and, or to most places in Israel. Um, and uh, we're talking about trying to uh, reach the smallholder farmers, and smallholder farmers uh, are, in fact, uh, producing four-fifths of the food in, uh, in Africa. And uh, in Senegal specifically, about 33 million uh, farms are of less than two hectares in, in size are producing about 80% of the food. So, um, our big question is how can... Uh, the smallholder small farmers be reached, and uh, even more so if we do reach them, uh, what exactly do we want to, to accomplish? What do we do want to do? What do we want to give them? What do we want, um, what kind of intervention do we want uh, to encourage in order to um, increase their uh, food production and in, in order to increase their, um, their income? So, um, the Techno-Agricultural Innovation for Poverty Allevi Alleviation, um, called TIPA, is, is a model that is attempting to do just that. And uh, TIPA in Hebrew, for those of you who don't speak Hebrew, TIPA means a drop, drop by drop. And it's uh, a model that is uh, uh, intended to encourage drip irrigation. But it's not just the technology of drip irrigation, because just the technology is not going to do the job, obviously. So what are we talking about? Um, we're talking about um, a, a, an agricultural production and community development model that, in, that incorporates drip irrigation together with improved inputs, a management package and training, and a lot of training, and more training, and again training, in order to optimize small-scale farming. And the, the idea is actually this, it's uh, to transform, first of all, the first idea is to transform the mindset of uh, smallholder farmers um, to think of themselves not as a simple peasant, but rather as an entrepreneur. The second um, base of it is that we use group organization in order to be able to um, manage the big um, issues such as uh, water delivery and, uh, and uh, use for example, um, and uh, to combine the technologies together with the training and also accompaniment. Um, the model is based on the African market garden that was uh, developed by, by Pro Professor Dov Pasternak um, in, uh, in, about, in the year about 2001. What had happened was that after, um, during the 1980s and 90s, it became more and more obvious that the large irrigation schemes that were being promoted by development agencies were not working. Um, they were being abandoned as soon as the agency uh, left the project. In other words, they were not sustainable. Um, and uh, a different approach needed to be um, adopted. It was, the idea was that uh, if we manage to make drip irrigation accessible also to small holders in some way, this might overcome the, the failure of the large irrigation schemes. Um, the African market garden, so as I said, um, in, in 2001, Professor Pasternak, an Israeli researcher, moved to Niamey to work for, um, for um, ICRISAT, for the CGIAR um, Research Center, and uh, began experimenting with what he called the African market garden, working uh, with uh, um, mainly women um, in the villages, 
uh, first with a first uh, with 70 meter square plots, and then later on developing it and and um, and realizing that it worked best when it was incorporated in a group uh, in a group setting. So um, the plots became larger and reaching um, what we we work with today, and, I, and I'll explain it in a moment. So. What is, the, what is the African farmer? Is he, is he a simple pe peasant? Well, in Israel, for example, um, people who are farmers have a, a, a kind of a, a, an aura, a prestigious aura, um, because um, in the early years of the, of the country, of the, the country's development, um, agriculture was considered the, the height or the top or the best activity that you can be involved in. And uh, I think even though today uh, there are less and less farmers and there are a lot of problems in the farming uh, domain, um, this aura has uh, stuck and stayed with farmers. However, in most developing countries, if you are a farmer, you're considered the lowest of the low. And we want to change this mindset. We think that uh, a farmer needs to think of himself or herself as an entrepreneur, the owner of an, not an owner of a piece of land, but rather an owner of an agricultural enterprise, even if that enterprise is only 1,000 meters square. Um, sorry, and the idea is also to incorporate um, a change of mindset that involves thinking of the future and planning for the future, and that is the, the, the base of entrepreneurship as well. Uh, the technology, of course, as I said, it's drip irrigation and uh, the numerous advantages of drip irrigation, I think uh, most people know, but I think I, I will just go over them again, that of course uh, it saves labor considerably and it gives you up to 50% water savings, sometimes even more. It gives you better yields in quantity and in quality. It minimizes uh, various diseases. It allows you to administer the fertilization uh, um, and all of the plant's needs in the most efficient way. And uh, you can also in be involved in year-round production um, with earlier and longer production seasons um, as opposed to what is now being practiced in Sub-Saharan Africa, which is only about 5% of the land is being irrigated in any way, let alone modern irrigation methods. But uh, um, almost all of the agriculture is just rain-fed agriculture. Okay, it's, it's also important to uh, promote diversification and an intensification of agriculture through the production of uh, irrigated high-value crops. Um, today, almost uh, all of the farmers in various regions are, are, are producing staple crops, but it's, uh, it's paradoxical because staple crops actually have a higher advantage if you're producing them on a larger scale. And a small-scale production has an advantage for family labor um, um, that vegetable production um, requires. Also, of course, the vegetables uh, can acquire a much, much higher uh, price in the market. So, And uh, finally, the third thing is that it needs to be supported, okay? So the irrigation needs to, so, so the, the farming, the agriculture needs, it needs to be um, uh, irrigated and it needs to be diversified. And most of all, it needs to be supported. And uh, as uh, um, we realized is that we want to make drip irrigation accessible to smallholder farmers, but a smallholder farmer cannot on his own or on her own um, uh, or get organized or have uh, or create the infrastructure or, 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 or do what is necessary or invest the necessary investment for the infrastructure necessary for the delivery of the water. So the delivery of the water and the, um, what we call the large issues need to be taken care of by a community effort, um, a group effort, and also an effort by the government and or the project. I think once, uh, once, the, the, once the village, the group has um, access to water, the rest is much, much easier. But in, within the group, there are designated committees. Well, first of all, let me say that the, the group, uh, um, we, when, when we went to, uh, in, in, I said, as I said, the, it, the model is based on the African Market Garden, which was developed in 2001, between 2001 and onwards, uh, by, by Professor Pasternak in Niamey. But uh, it was adopted by Mashav in about uh, 2005 in South Africa, and, and then implemented in Senegal beginning in 2006. The first implementations were done uh, through very small partnerships with various NGOs, with also varying success uh, rates, and, I, and I'm going to talk about it in a moment. But in, in 2013, um, 
the Italian, um, the, the Italian development agency who visited one of these TIPA sites and were very impressed, uh, decided to do an upscaling of the, of the model of the project and to adopt it um, on a nationwide basis in Senegal, together with the Senegalese government. And so um, we, the project was called PAPSEN, TIPA. PAPSEN is an acronym for the um, Programme de Project, Programme d'appui au PENIA de Senegal, which means the, uh, the project uh, to support uh, Senegal, Senegal's uh, investment in agriculture. And uh, so the, the idea was that a group, that we located groups of uh, farmers in various villages, um, giving priority to groups who are already involved in vegetable production, um, usually um, hand, uh, hand watered, watered with watering cans. Um, giving priority to women's groups, but in any case, most of the people involved in the vegetable production were women's groups, but not only. Um, and uh, um, involving them in the project, signing a contract with the group, signing a contract with the group, and, uh, um, and then uh, each member signing a, a contract with its group as well. Uh, the most important part of it was that they had to establish a maintenance fund from the very beginning and a management fund. And what does that mean? That is thinking of the future. It means that uh, in someday this uh, drip irrigation equipment that is uh, provided by a project is going to wear out, it's going to break down, it's going to be destroyed, it needs to be replaced. But from the very first day that you start working, you need to start preparing for it. And that is the, the, management the maintenance fund. And uh, the management fund is for the daily workings of the Okay. Now, I'd like to share with you some of, uh, some of uh, what had happened with uh, TIPA, and uh, not, all of it were, not all of it was a great success. Okay, so here you see a picture of one of the villages. It's a village called Kuryaba, and this is the way it looked in 2010, shortly after it was established. And this is how it looks today. In other words, there's no... No... <laughs> no... Um, no evidence that a project ever existed there. And it's uh, very, very sad to see. And the question is, what went wrong? What happened? Well, I could give you a million excuses because, and, and my excuses are very, very good. Uh, the group conflicted, it didn't, ha it didn't work out. Uh, they started uh, harvesting at night so that their neighbors won't know how much they harvested. And they, they claimed that they didn't have uh, money to pay for the water because they, it, in their culture they were not used to paying for water in the past. And they thought it was a very um, strange notion. And they refused to do it. And in order to not do it, they, they tried to uh, claim that they were not uh, making any money from the, pro from the project. They also had conflicts with the NGO uh, who provided all of the uh, equipment because uh, um, the NGO at the beginning uh, didn't tell them how much they need to uh, pay back. And when they started paying back, they were paying and paying and paying and paying. So at some point they realized that um, they had to put an end to it and they just they, they took the project apart. But all of this is, like I said, it's excuses because if you look around Africa or anywhere else in the world, you can see hundreds, thousands, millions of these types of projects, then this is how they look. And it's not even just, uh, um, you know, I mean, the fact that you have a good reason. But, okay, but this is also a picture of Kuryaba. Uh, who you see here, this is the imam of the, of the village. And he was also a part of the project, and when the project uh, fell apart, he began adopting uh, he began adopting drip irrigation on his own. Okay, and here you see another farmer who ad adopted drip irrigation for his own. No, the project is is a perimeter, a joint perimeter, in which each uh, farmer gets 1,000 meters square. But uh, here you see farmers who adopted it, who had worked in the project while the project was going, and when the project fell apart, they decided that they needed to continue working with drip irrigation, and they invested on their own to do so. Okay, here you see, um, this is actually Mr. Yaba, uh, the, the head of the village and the uh, descendant of the original Yabas of Kuryaba. Uh, and also, he has about two hectares of uh, drip irrigation. Now, of course, not everybody can afford to do so, but what had happened was that the uh, 30 or so members of the group, each one took his or her own um, drip irrigation uh, kit that, they, that he or he, she was provided during the uh, project and took it to his or her backyard. 
So the question is, is this a success or is this a failure? I, I, I don't know, I can't give you a, a, a straight answer because I'm not sure. We have here three people who adapted irrigation on a, on a larger scale and numerous who took it, the, the, the irrigation to their homes. The reason they took it to their homes and not to their fields is because they don't have water uh, delivery to their fields and in the homes they have a water tap. So it's just to tell you, they didn't have the money to invest in bringing the water to the fields actually. To use drip irrigation. So um, that, that, was, that was before, that was the, the, the first TIPA drops and then, and then there, like I said there was the upscaling and, and we learned a lot of lessons. Uh, we learned that we need to, to really uh, train the people not only in the knowledge of and the know-how of irrigation and how irrigation works but also on how to work together. And, and from the beginning we started um, training and giving them not only on how to spread out the systems and to plant and to do modern agriculture, but also um, here in this picture you see um, one of our um, technicians who is explaining to this lady. This lady came to the site um, the day after the drip irrigation um, was set out and uh, she was worried because she didn't see that uh, the, the ground was wet. And she took her little watering can and started watering her plants one by one. <laughs> and he, so he, he, he showed her that the soil is actually very moist on the inside and that she didn't have to worry that the drippers were working. That's an example. Okay, here you, have, you see compost preparation, of course on compost preparation. And here you see some of the first yields. Trainings, I said, trainings. Here's a training on group organization and how to work together. Like I said, lessons learned from our previous failures. Okay, the example of Tuba Tool, um, I just want to tell you that here you see um, um, one example, a um, uh, group that started working in 2014 and by 2016 um, was, uh, was working very, very well and uh, is working still very well, okay? Um, I just want to tell you something about uh, the, what they did in the rainy season of 2016 very quickly, even though I know I'm going over my time limit, I'm, I will do it very quickly. Uh, the variety, okay, um, like I said, the, this, group, this uh, village is placed in the peanut basin of Senegal, and the peanut basin of Senegal is, uh, the traditional crop there is uh, groundnuts, it's peanuts. And um, so they insisted on doing peanuts during the rainy season. We didn't want them to do it, but they wanted to do it. So we said, if you're going to do it, let's just do it in a different way. And so we took a local variety, which is a shorter variety. And uh, we, we, we planted before the rainy season using the drip irrigation. And we optimized uh, the utilization of area. And I, here I'd like to connect to something that, um, that uh, Professor Falta said yesterday. And he, yesterday, Professor Falta talked about a lot of different uh, um, very, um, very sophisticated uh, um, innovations. But the one thing that stuck with me as a, field, as an, as a development field worker is when he talked about the uh, small method that, uh, of checking whether or not your grains are dry enough using a soda, bo soda bottle. And that was something I said, wow, you know what, that is something I could use today, right now. Tomorrow I could use it. And, and that's what uh, we try to um, promote is also not only technology but also techniques. Okay, thank you very much.